All right, let's keep it moving here. I have picks 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 6, 2, 4, 2, 8, 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 10 this year, and three firsts and two twos next year. That's a lot of draft picks. Yeah. Uh, should I go quarterback JSN Gibbs with the expectation of drafting Caleb Williams, Drake May next year, or go quarterback, quarterback Gibbs? Uh, my best QB is Jimmy G. I he have said he's got two and four. He's two, What's that? He's, he's got two, four, six, he said. I'm trying to find it on my phone so I can read along with you. He's got one, two, one, four, one, six, two, four, two, eight, three, one, three, two, three, ten. I'll definitely take two quarterbacks. Um, having two in that four so you can get two out of those three quarterbacks we just talked about i would go quarterback quarterback for sure yeah well he, he's saying should he not do that and and think in the thinking of he's he's f- seemingly feels like he's going to get drake may and caleb williams next year who cares and that taking those rookie quarterbacks only gives you a better chance of having better picks next year with those first if you take jsn and Gibbs and those guys are going to be potentially in your starting lineup, make helping you win. So one, two, one, four, one, six. I would definitely take those two quarterbacks, and I would. Yeah, know, I mean, yeah, I would try, and then you maybe try to get take that six and become five and get JSN all over again. Yeah, or take Gibbs and trade him. Whatever you want to do, you could probably take the two eight and the two four and 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 something else and try to move up, back up into the first and try to get somebody else you like. I don't know, but no, I I think I agree. I would go. Uh, I don't mind going quarterback, quarterback Gibbs or JSN, whichever one's there, and not really doing anything else, and then hoping that you get Caleb and and Drake May. And well, he says the best quarterback is Jimmy G. Like there's to me, like you, there's no chance if you're lucky to be. You got to start trying to stockpile quarterbacks. You're lucky to have two and four. Like I'm, you know, I just talked about that rebuild. I got, I got four, five, six. You know. So like just have I mean I do have the one I'm talking about going Bijan but you having two and four gives you two quarterbacks high profile people love to talk about quarterbacks I mean you know sure Will Levis might be the best of the group when it's all said and done but let's just say these top three are you know especially with Anthony Richardson could be the top end of the fantasy production yeah like you got to take two of those quarterbacks you got Jimmy G's your best one J- JSN could be the I mean, I've, if JSN's Justin, you know, uh, Jefferson, Jefferson at the end of the day, yeah, you'd be like, well, I wish I had that dude. But still, like, there's Justin Jefferson's the best, most consistent fantasy scorer in the fantasy in the league right now. Justin Jefferson, one quarterback league, he's my 1 1. I'm not taking a running back before I take Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson is the most automatic 20 points every week in the league right now, him and Travis Kelsey. In a super flex league, seven quarterbacks on average go before Justin Jefferson. Every time. At least, Every time. Yeah, at least six. At least six. But most, most of the time you got, you know, six, seven quarterbacks go before Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson is the best thing we got going. And the Superflex, <laughs> and the Superflex half the first round is all quarterbacks to get started. You So that's why, like, you know, JF Sin, he might be a stud. He may, you know, he, he, he is a stud. He may be a ridiculous stud. I would try my best. I mean, you got two and four, get two of the quarterbacks. If, 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 JSN and Gibbs are on the board, which they will be, or, you know, you got another quarterback to look at for some reason. You got those two guys are on the board at five. You got six. Maybe you want to make, maybe you can't go wrong, but maybe you're like, Hey, I'll take, I'll take JSN over Gibbs here. So yeah, I have no problem. I don't even try to make a move there unless it's cheap. Well, you got all those other picks. So, I mean, you could give up, you know, you could move a, Hey, you know, I I don't really care who I get here, but this is the game. This is what I like to do. (laughs) This is what I like to do. Hey, I don't really care who I get here, but I'll give you this third round pick because I've already got Gibbs three times, uh-huh. you know, and that could be a little white lie in dynasty trades. And, in, in, you know, and when you're on the clock, you can tell people you have a, a player in other leagues. That I think that's got them to stack to the gills with them. That's, you know, Hey, I got too many Gibbs. Yeah. I need, and it, and you, then you, you even, diversify. Then you even yeah. go with the, if you were going to take Gibbs anyway, I just gave you a third for free because I don't want to take, you know, I need to diversify. I don't have any JSN. I got gifts three times. You're, you know, you try that move is to, you know, hey, I, you sure. got, because there's multiple seconds and multiple thirds in this question scenario here. Right. You know? it, there's all sorts of movement you can do. I might, I might try to do a little bit cheaper movement and try, try to take some big swings on some guys later. But if you could throw something up there and guarantee yourself JSN, if you like one or the other, uh, I'd be fine with that. Um, I wanted to real quick go back to the, the Zach question, the first one he had, the first one we did, I think, 
And he's got Malik Willis on that team with the Daniel Jones thing. And on the trades, put Malik Willis in every single trade that you're sending quarterbacks out with. Definitely. Just stack them up. More throw, quarterbacks. Throw around. them in there. Yep. Somebody might still be intrigued by Malik <gasps> Willis and have some value Probably on I should have cut the mic off. <laughs> but just keep chucking them in there. Um, we got one more. Our guy Colt on Shall We Football podcast. Go check mm-hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. Um, one QB, 10 man, start nine. Is it worth it to package, let's say, Fields and 105 for Josh Allen? And a 1QB. For the slight positional advantage Allen could provide over Fields. Eileen Hold, just curious what your guys' thoughts are. Um, the start so, so you the start ten and start however many kind of confuses me. Just what it's ten man it. start nine. So you start so it's ten man. So it's not a twelve man league. It's a ten man league and start nine. Which what does that even mean? Two quarterbacks. I mean two wide receiver. Two running backs. Two wide receivers and a tight end gives you five, and then four flexes or three three wide receivers. And so there's plenty of tech. So it's ten man, but a big starting lineup, which probably equals out to a regular twelve man size. Um. You said given fields and one five for Josh Allen. I mean, I don't hate it. Um, fields could easily come in. They're obviously putting weapons around him now. Um, I like where I like I like some of the things that the, the Bears are doing. Fields is that you know? Are you competitive? You know, are you about to win this year? Because Josh Allen's an absolute stud, and he can make that single game difference. But when Field was Fields was on his t- like Josh Allen ain't running sixty yard touchdowns, Bo. He's not gonna get a step faster. He's already he's already out of his top end speed prime. You know, <laughs> like that's just that's just how it is. Yeah, but uh, he's, you know? he's that Cam Newton guy though. Right, right. So Josh, you know Justin Fields is just getting started, and he's got a lot more top end speed than, than Allen. Allen, right now, I'm not cool. Don't light get me years wrong. apart, different, co- better quarterback, but light years apart, wise. light years, but 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 we saw that the chink, the 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 erosion of the day ballless Bills offense. Like the last six games of the season, they couldn't do anything. They were like just chucking it deep every play. They had no system. They had no heart like not yeah. not 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 football competitive heart i just mean like they had no intern like they just right. didn't know what they were doing yeah and and yeah oh well allen threw a couple picks well i mean the boy the pressure to them to go out there and win every week they have a good football team and they had like their scheme just like went away like what what were they even doing they brought in the um running back for the colts and try yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. trying everything and you know i'm not saying that i'm think that fields is all of going to have all of a sudden going to have the best i was loving fields last year and said he couldn't get in a worse situation there couldn't find a worse situation than the bears they're moving in the right direction they could still be light years behind the bills but the bills started going backwards last half of the season and couldn't get it under control and somebody's got to come step up in there and say hey this is this is what we're doing and that's not the quarterback's fault per se like the quarterback can't come in here and draw up the x's and o's yeah, you saw the 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 erosion of the Bills' offense, and we talked about this a few years ago when um, Frank Reich left the Eagles and he went to the Colts, and he was the third long guy. He, the Eagles, all those third downs that the yeah. Eagles converted, the Colts were doing their thing with Frank White for right for a minute. All of a sudden, last year, the Giants were moving the ball, matriculating the ball down the field, <laughs> sure, like, you know, with nobody but a running quarterback at Barkley and some scrubs and wide receiver. Like that day ball obviously was not got, didn't get enough. He got the respect. He went from the offensive coordinator to the head coach of the Giants, but enough respect was not given. And you can say what you want to about Frank Wright not being the quarterback, the coach of the Colts anymore, but look what happened with the quarterbacks. He had to roll through, he, you know, he had to roll through Phillip Rivers. He had to, obviously, the, Andrew Luck was gone, had to deal with you know, Brissett, Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz. You know Matt Ryan toast like he tried. They, he he did everything he could do, and he was a scapegoat. And now he's going to go down there in Carolina, and I bet he's going to. I bet they're going to be awesome in two years. Yeah, and you know, so like I to me, I love Josh Allen. I was, I was not in on Josh Allen pre rookie season guy. I was, you know, hey rookie, you didn't hear me talking about rookie draft rock and Josh Allen, but immediately I was like, holy cow, we got white Cam Newton. Yeah. All I needed to do was see him on the field one time in the NFL. And I was like, that's, there's my white Cam Newton. I picked him up everywhere that I could pick him up in the one quarterback leagues where he was on the waiver wire. And you know, that's just, he was, 
it didn't take me long to be like, I, I like that guy. Yeah. And I still like that guy, but if the bills, you know, I'm, so I'm just saying like the fields to Josh Allen trade like one five, that's a decent little draft pick. You know, I mean, that's even in, even in one quarterback league, you got, you know, that's almost like that tier break. If you say there's, you know, if you like two or three of those running backs and you like two or three of those wide receivers, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, all the questions start after, you know, these five, six guys, that's your, that's a tier break spot to be trading from. And the reason that the whole conversation right there started from, are you about to win? If you're like the high, if you're top two or three odds to win, go ahead and grab Allen. But if you've been in the middle to the bottom and, and you're not like, cause if let's say fields is getting you 20 points a week and average in 20, 22 points a week and Allen's averaging 28, is that five going to be the enough? If your team sucks, take a rookie. Yeah. Keep fields and take a rookie, you know, for sure. If you, if you like, Hey man, if I didn't have, no, if, I went, I, if I went from fields to Josh Allen, I would have won a championship this year. I was in the playoffs already, you know, like you gotta, you gotta know your team. You're hoping for more security long-term with Josh Allen mm-hmm. basically. And, and, but I, I'm fine with role. It's one quarterback, but I'm, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm fine. I'll keep fields and take that one five, which is most likely flowers or Charbonnet and fucking and roll. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I mean, and then you can get, I know it's 10 man and you're hunting for that positional but you, advantage, it, but yeah, you can go from two, five, you can go from two, five up to two, one and take Anthony Richardson. Now you got Justin, now you got Justin Fields and Anthony Richardson. One of them's going to be Josh Allen. That's <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> and keep uh, it one five. All right, let's keep it moving. Um, I got one more on the, uh, one more on this chat over here. Let's see. Um, he's basically asking if 12 man super flex tight end premium, um, should he trade, uh, a two ones and Lance for Lamar Jackson? What? A uh, random ones, 12 team super flex, one, eight Lance and a 24 first. Um, no, that's too much. Too much for Lamar? Yeah. I mean, I think if you're giving Lance one eight in a first next year, I think you got to offer that to the top five quarterbacks first. Yeah, I, I might as well. You know, obviously, you know, that's that's our motto first. But if you're going to offer that for that, then you got to offer that for this first. You right. know, like if you're going to go after Lamar Jackson with that package, you need to be turned down by the Hertz plus owners. You know, you got to go to Hertz, Burrow, Herbert, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes first. Yeah. And get shot down and Trevor Lawrence and got to get shut down by all those guys first. And all those guys could out get outscored by Lamar Jackson. But, yeah. you know, Lamar Jackson is, you know, I'm a, I'm kind of okay with it. I just need some, I need something else. I need some, I need a, a player that I, you know, a position player that I like back and maybe, you know, see if I can get a second back as well. I need, I need another pick, like a, a player I like, and then I'll, you know, just try to balance. I don't need to give all that up. I don't hate it. Like one eight. Sure. See you later. Lance, fine see you later sure. I'm, I'm okay with cashing out it, sure. it'll, I'll, it'll hurt me if he's good yeah and it's awesome but i'm okay with cashing out in the random 24 first i just I'm, I'm assuming if i'm trading up for lamar I'm, I'm ready to go um the thing about that trade is it seems like when you send that trade it seems like you've sent it for lamar jackson who has not been injured twice sure. in the last two years that it just seems you're it seems like you're paying for next year's Lamar Jackson being healthy before you got it being healthy. You know, if you told me I got a good team and Lamar Jackson is going to play every game for me or every game, but one and be healthy and be nasty and MVP, you don't have to be the MVP, but you just got to be in the top five. You got to be talking about, Hey, you know, Lamar Jackson plus five fifty to be the MVP. You know, you got, you got to be in the conversation of MVP, just like these other five quarterbacks at the top are. And that's a fine price, but you're paying for basically that tri- that what you just offered and that being said you know you're if that was a trade that was going to go through then that you did get value on trey lance which can be a cat and mouse game you know sure sure getting value on trey lance is cat and mouse but you know and it's you know even super flex one eight that's still a fun player because you got the yeah. four quarterbacks that like one eight is Will Levis or, or a position player at minimum, you know? So again, it's just like I was saying that top five pick in a, in a redraft league, one five in a redraft, 
you throw in the four quarterbacks, you got one nine ish, one eight, one nine, one ten. There's a tier break in there somewhere of what these quarterbacks, you know, you got Charbonnet, Gibbs, and uh, Bijan. And then you got the JSN and the two. Quentin Johnston, Quentin Addison. Addison. And then Flowers and, right outside of there. So, you know, so that's six. And then Flowers. So that's seven, you know, but for you, but somebody else might not have Flowers there. Yeah, and you can throw Levis in there. Right. So that's that one eight is not a necessarily a throwaway because if you're in Superflex, it can't be a throwaway. No, it was certainly not. You know, um, obviously none of them's a throwaway if you hit, but you probably, you know, odds are you're not going to pick an, uh, you know, an MVP candidate. I'm just saying it just seemed like you're just buying you're buying a, a healthy Lamar Jackson with that price but you yeah. again you got to go out and you got to get you got to send those offers to Trevor Lawrence or better first and maybe some of his health this year wasn't necessarily being unhealthy I uh, couldn't agree more um, he, yeah smart man yo my ankle hurt I gotta get out yeah. of here yeah and we didn't, we're not winning I'm not saying he did I'm just saying I'm not saying possibility. he did but I, I, I can't blame him if he did I just pulled up the screenshot of his team he needs a running back real bad he's got his running back room is is piss poor um so you know the rest of the the starting roster is which really means good. Lamar Jackson you ain't winning the championship if you got no start if you if you just run, if you saw his team right and you're giving the starting away lineup that. is great outside of that you know he's got Justin Jefferson and he's got Waller and Pitts it's tight end premium okay um which you know we're hoping for more out of um, obviously he's got it's, deshaun watson mm-hmm. and trey lance in the in the super flex christian watson's on the roster somewhere um there was another good decent some other depth juju and some other so, guys like that so like it's a, it's a pretty good roster just the running backs are are non-existent okay so you got a good roster a good a garrett good, wilson good roster good starting lineup so if you make that trade now you got to go out and see how competitive you are and see if your other pieces can stay healthy enough to get you moving. And then you got a trade, which you don't have. You've already given up your first rounder next year and you've given up bullets for, you got Lamar Jackson and he does have another, he's got, he's got three first next year. Okay. Well, I mean, if you can start moving that, cause you got to move those for at least one running back. Now you could, you could go take one first next year and get probably two you know, you could probably grab a one first next year, probably get, gets you an Aaron Jones and an AJ Dillon, you know? Oh yeah. You could, I'm not worried about the part where you be, now that I see that he has a decent amount more picks and then there's some more like Elijah Moore's on his bench, you know, there's Nico Collins is on his bench. There's some guys that could really, you know, get a bump in value and you could put those guys together. Romeo Dobbs, uh, Gusecki, all those guys on his bench, you know, got got a nice, got some juice to him there. Rashad Penny got a little juice to him, um, so you could you could make moves. Calvin Ridley, yeah, well, um, take four of those guys. Take the four last, the last four guys you just named and and sub out one of those first round picks. Yeah, you know, like if you got if you can bring that, in. What I'm saying is you can get two or three running backs. I think with all those guys and some picks. Yeah, with some I, of those guys and some picks. I I just yeah. It feels like with all that you're give. I feel like you could get more for than just Lamar for what you're offering before we play because if something happens and Trey Lance just all of a sudden really, you know, it's more than apparent. If he, he's healthy and he's not as good as Brock Purdy, yeah, we got a problem as far as your dynasty asset. If he goes out there and he's you know throwing for 200 yards and a touchdown and a half a game and he's running for 70 yards a game and a touchdown a game, you're fine. You're just fine. Yeah, sure. But we saw a quarterback come in there and move this offense more than a game, more than two games. You know, I was talk- I, saw- I mentioned that about Stidham earlier. For one game, a backup can play good for a game. Sure. It's not unheard of. But Purdy came in there and played good for games, <laughs> marched into the playoffs Multiple. and won and, you know, went to the NFC Championship game and got his arm broke off first quarter of the game. Like Brock Purdy – is the truth yeah he is not trey lance trey lance may be the truth right trey lance if trey lance was the truth he'd be so much more truth than brock purdy <laughs> sure he'd be the so much more but we know brock purdy can move the game has just enough of this and just enough of that to get it done and we don't know that trey lance can do that yet so i don't mind cashing out on trey lance it just you know to me Lamar Jackson is scary given some situation. I don't 
I feel like just like you said, how hurt was he last year? I feel like a happy paid Lamar Jackson is going to be the most dominant force on yeah, the Yeah, I'm not field. scared of that. You any know? of that stuff. I think I'm I think good. once the sit once the dust settles, no matter what team he's on, I think he's going to be freaking amazing. I don't know why he's not an Atlanta Falcon already. Yeah, for real. Come on down there and put him in a dome and just be ridiculous. He's been playing in Baltimore looking like that. Yeah. Put him in the dome, nobody would catch him. Yeah. Obviously everybody's faster, but you ain't that fast. Right. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm buying Lamar. I, I would need something back, but I would do the deal. I need I need a two and a player or something else back in the deal. You got room to be. You can't stop. You got to go get that. You got to go get some running backs then. But you can buy them. They're fine. You can you can acquire middle aged to old running backs without a problem. And what I would like to do. Picks. What I would like to do, especially since you don't have the running backs and you never know. You could look. You could have a great starting lineup, and by week four, you'd be like, "Damn, I am not making the playoff." <laughs> you know, because that's dynasty. Sure. That's fantasy football. So the, the dynasty part. What I would like to do is is take the Trey Lance and the 1-8 and just grab some of that, three or four of those depth pieces if you got to, and really just throw depth at the other team and just keep that 24 first. Um, Because you could grab, you know, you named a bunch of guys that were on the bench that were sound, you know, the Gusecki's and this and that and these players, you know, you named a handful of good players. Not like Wilson, obviously. Not you know, not stud young player. He had you know. some cornerstones already. Yeah, you got cornerstones and, and, some, and then good, some good decent depth. So you, cra- you hand just grab a handful of those depth players and throw them at Lamar Jackson with Trey Lance, <laughs> and keep that twenty four first. You you know you just you gotta you gotta kill them with. The, sometimes you gotta send the trade offer, and your trade offer, what you're sending, has like seven pieces to it. Yeah, you, you love you know, to overwhelm them. Ah, uh, you got to overwhelm. That's lots of lots of tchotchkes. If you want to get the deal done, sometimes you just got to give what seems like way too much. Sometimes mm-hmm. there's you if you cannot get a deal done, you got to keep adding players. Yeah, big big go broke. First time I've ever seen it broke a broke a entire league's trade market in in one <laughs> trade where he just kept throwing shit and just kept adding more stuff. Nobody and would nobody, trade with me. Nobody could do another deal. Nobody would <laughs> trade with me, so I just kept adding to it. I was gonna get a deal done. <laughs> And I got uh, it done. What um, you got anything else? You want you ready to wrap it up? What do you, you want to talk? You got anything else on your mind before we before we get out of here? I'm good if you're good. I'm 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 great. You, I mean, if you want to keep going, you throw we, throw something else out there. We can keep going if you want. Do we need to be sure to like, subscribe, comment below? If you've been if you if you hung on for this long, go ahead and do all that kind stuff. Uh, if you want to keep going, we can roll for another minute or two. Whatever you want to do. I'm out of things to talk about, but if you got something to talk about, I'm down. Don't overplay your hand. Okay. All right. I got a note on my phone right. here. Let me, Let's let me go. look something up here. I, I mentioned it with the, uh, I, I touched on it with the uh, Raheem Mostert trade the other night I was talking about when mm-hmm. I could have got a third round pick for Raheem Mostert. I got a, um, I got a trade that was just popped up in my hand head the other night. Um, first, first couple weeks of this past season, Curtis Samuel comes out of the, out of the, darkness and and Carson Wentz loves him and I got offered a second round pick for Curtis Samuel in one of my leagues and I was like no way and then all of a sudden Carson Wentz gets benched and Curtis Samuel goes away again later on in the season Carson Wentz comes back in for one reason or another and Car- Curtis Samuel appears again but that trade's no longer off, off on the table because the dude's not in He's not nowhere near the playoffs, right? And he doesn't want to tr- make that trade. All of a sudden, his second round pick is more valuable because he's missing the playoffs, and Curtis Samuel does nothing for him because he's missing the playoffs. Sure. And you know, I was like, you know, I was a big fan of Curtis Samuel. He, you know, did some work early in his career. Had had some injuries. Was on the Panthers. Panthers couldn't complete a pass for a couple years. It felt like you <laughs> sure. know, there's a couple seasons there where he just couldn't get anything done. And then he just right here in the right spot, in the right 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 place in time with a quarterback who loves him and is peppering him with targets. And I had a sale window open up, and the guy came at me, and I overplayed my hand. Mm. Now I got Curtis Samuel. And that's not a terrible thing, but again, Curtis Samuel's over there with Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. And I think they did they did they bring in a tight end yet? Uh, there's talks of Kincaid going there. Oh yeah, I think uh, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, there's just and and Sam Howell's the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So I can tell you, maybe right. Sam loves Curtis. Unless Sam loves Curtis and wants to get McLaurin mad at him, and Dotson mad at him, 
I may not ever get a second round pick. They got to be in on Lamar too, right? I mean, why wouldn't you be? Yeah. So you know, I just that was don't overplay your hand. I had the most. I had the Mostert. If you didn't listen to it quickly, I could have got a, a third round pick for Mostert going into the fantasy playoffs this year in a no tr- no you know da- no trade deadline league, and I tried to get a two, and it didn't happen. And the guy that wanted to give me the three lost, and he didn't want him next week in the playoffs because he lost. And he didn't help me at all. And now yeah. I got a Mostert, which he did resign with the Dolphins, and Mostert lives. And anything could happen. And I could, there could definitely be another spot to get a third round pick for Mostert later. But there almost certainly will be if he's healthy, I feel it, like. That's what I'm saying. Somebody will want him. Jeffrey Wilson will get hurt. <laughs> Mostert will be killing Wilson it for a minute. He'll be running real fast. On the <laughs> He'll be killing it in that Dolphin system again, especially yeah. if two is playing. But that was this. That was a little tidbit that I was like, you know what? I had a couple examples, Curtis Samuel being one of them, and not that Curtis Samuel. What he was starting for my team, you know, he was doing good. I didn't want to lose him either, but like, it can go. It, and he's not a team. He's not a player that teams are going to scheme for every week, every week, every week. It would just happen to be a quarterback love thing. Yeah. And when Steven said it, he was like, "I love Curtis Samuel." Yeah. If I when I like, I guess when he got signed, he was like, "I, I can't, I've been wanting to play with that guy or yeah. something like that." You know. Curtis Samuel's not a difference maker. Take that second round pick and do something with it. And I don't have it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I don't well, have it. Overplayed my hand. Yeah, that's when you gotta that's when you gotta unload the value spike on on those kind of guys. Even sure. if even if you know you were a lover of them. Yeah. Gotta, maybe maybe dump them. Maybe dump them. Maybe dump them. I like it. All right. You ready now? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of that. And a little bit of that. We're going to be on our way out of here. We appreciate y'all. Like I said, hit us up on Twitter with your Dynasty Trades. We're going to try to do this once a week, once every other week. Direct message. The more details, the better. How many teams? A screenshot of your of, of your team and your bench spots and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if you want to get crazy, maybe send a link to the league so you could see some other teams. If you, if you got, like, a possible idea of who you're trading with or something. Uh, but the more details, the better if, uh, if we're going to pick you for uh, some trade talk. So hopefully we'll uh, get some of those. And, and, of course, you can always go to Patreon.com and we'll throw those up there. We do live interactive uh, shows with them where we just we send out a link and, and you know, eight people can join and, and we can all kind of fantasy round circle with each other. So we do those uh, at least once a month. And then we have extra three extra shows a month. So. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on on Patreon. We got ADP coming up. Uh, a little nice little tool being built. So, five dollar holler, help your boys out. Uh, but five stars and uh, a YouTube subscription would would also work. So, yeah, no doubt. Coming back next week with uh, must must get players in your draft. Sure, must have these players. Must have these players. Sure. All right, boys. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>